just an ESC that I'm after, the XLX2, and this car should be going after, sorry, your ESC and the wiring. Sorry, I've got a solder the wires. I keep forgetting that part, but once I do that, it should be right to go. So, like I say, please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. It costs absolutely nothing to subscribe, and it helps me out immensely. And thank you to all my loyal subscribers. Over the years, as subscribers stuck by me. I couldn't do this channel without you. Thank you so much for all the comments and likes, the shares, whatever you do with my videos. Thank you so much. But if you do know anyone that likes these type of stuff or wants to see more of this type of stuff, please get them to, to subscribe to my channel. It'll mean a lot. I want to try to get to a 1,000 subscribers. So I did say try to get to a 1,000 by the end of the year, but... The way we're going at the moment, I'm hoping to get to a 1,000, hopefully in the next month or two. So if you know anyone that can make that happen, please, it would be absolute awesome. So thank you all again for watching my video, subscribing, and I'll see you on another. Hi guys, it's Glenn here again, just here with the 1.8 scale build that I've been doing, just to show you, just going to show you where I'm up to, what I've done. And explain a few things that I've done to it as well. So starting off, I did put the Louise tyres back on, the off-roading tyres. I'm hoping they're going to hold up and not become pizza cut cutters. But if they do become pizza cutters, then I still have to figure out the rear diff. Only because, as you can see, the dish of them, the rear diff is going to spin a bit differently to the front. Only because of that dish. So I've still got to try and figure out what gear ratio I need in the diff to make it work fine with the front. So that out of the way, I will be running these just for the first run and see how see how it works and go from there. So also, I did cut a hole in the top of the, as you can see, on the top of the shell. So I'll take this off and I'll do some more explaining. I did make this little bit there as well, as you can see there. Now that there is going to be for the ESC to sit on. And as you can see, these little blue things here, all I've done with these, they're off those cheap paint brushes. It's only plastic, these here. So I just cut it out, I just cut the handles off the cheap plastic because I couldn't find anything that would go into these ends here. Like push them in. So I just yeah, I just cut them off, whatever length I needed, wedged them in there, and then also use this real thin bit of perspex at the moment. Bolted it on top with these four screws, and yeah, it's done. But that there takes a fair bit of effort to bend down just to touch the motor, but when you lift it up, it's dead on straight again. So I don't think I'm going to have a problem with this here when I put the ESC on there. So the ESC that I'm looking at using is the Castle XLX2. It's 3S to 6S LiPo you can run on it. The length is 101.2 millimeters. So I made sure this is going to be more than long enough. So I can also, if it's too long, I can always just lop a bit off the ends. It doesn't really worry me. The width is 63.3 millimeters, which this is just wide enough. The height is 55.8 millimeters, which from here to the top of my shell is roughly about that. And the fan size is 50 millimeters. So that hole there is 50 millimeters. And it's roughly 55.8 from this here to the top of the shell. So that's why I did that. And hopefully the fan will get nice fresh air just from the top of that. And hopefully it'll sit pretty flush. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. But we'll see when we get it. Uh, what else are we about to? The move on next to the dog bones. As you can see here. These dog bones here. One there, one in there. Let's see, I've got some, got some play just there, which they fit. They fit reasonably well, actually. These dog bones, the length of them is eighty-eight point eight millimeter from pin to pin. So I'll show you. This one here's just the one ten scale one, but it'll give you an idea on what I'm talking about here. So. 88 point, oh, 88 millimeters from pin to pin. So it's 88 millimeters from this pin here to that pin there. 
So it gives you a bit of an idea. This is just the 110 scale. Don't, don't look at the size of it. I know it's longer than what I'm saying, but the, this is the one inside the car. So it's 88 millimeters from that pin to the other pin. Then the end of ball to ball is 95 millimeters. So from the very tip of that to the very tip of that is 95 millimeters. The shaft thickness just here is 4.3 millimeters. And the pin size just here is three millimeters thick. So that's what I'm running inside of this here. And they both fit actually quite well. As you can see, I've still got a little bit of play. It might be too much, but I like a little bit of extra play than having it way too tight. But as you can see in here, if it was to come back now, I don't know, zoom is in. See that little orange plastic bit there moving? That, I'm using one of these. I'll zoom this out. I'm using one of these. It's like a little rubber, silicon. I'm not too sure if they're what they're for exactly, if they're supposed to be for shocks or something. I can't think what I bought them for, but I've had them for years. And what I've done with that, I've just put that inside that cup. As you can see it moving there. I'll zoom back in for you so you can have another good look. See that there? I got one in there, and I got one in that in there. So what that does, so if I didn't have that orange one at the bottom down here, that pin just there would be right on the edge of that cup. And nine times out of ten, it'll most probably fall out or you'll end up stuffing your cup or whatever else. So that's why I put that pin in. So then that won't go any further than that, that pin or that ball or whatever you want to say inside that cup. And vice versa. So I didn't really necessarily have to have that orange one up here because I wouldn't go that far anyway. But I just did it just to be a bit on the safe side. And I did the same with the front as well. So, but I think I've only got it on one side as you can hear. I think this side here doesn't have one. But this up underneath here does because this one here is a lot quieter. So... That's how I sorted that out there, just to make up just a little bit difference. Because I thought the size up from that, I think it was like 94 or something, would be too long and it would never fit. So I just I just went with the 88s. And if they were a little bit too short, then I would have to go up to the 94s and then really try to make it work. But the 88s fit really well, so I'm happy with that. So the next thing I've also done, take this off here. is the bulkhead, as you can see right there. I end up shaving two mil off that just to fit the motor, which you can see it's still very close, but I've got a little bit more room than I had before. So all I'd done with this to shave it was just hit it with sandpaper, rough sandpaper, and just kept, kept rubbing it just so then I'll shave it enough on that one side so the motor will fit. Probably took me probably 15 minutes or so, half an hour, just to get it, make sure that I've got enough room and it's not going to be rubbing. But yeah, that there worked really good. I do have a photo of it before I refit it back to the car, so I'll, I'll add that up now. And as you can see that I did take a fair bit off it, but I don't think it's going to affect it too much. I think I've still got enough meat on there to support it without it breaking. But if it breaks, I've got more parts here. I'll just have to redo it again and maybe think about how to modify it again without that weak spot. But I think that's more than enough to be able to hold what I'm doing here anyway. So the next thing I've got to do is solder if I can find any oh yeah there they are solder these here they're eight millimeter female connectors just there and solder them onto here onto these wires here and then put heat shrink over it 
I'm going to do that. I also have the wire here that I'm going to be using, which I'll show you a bit of difference here. So, with the wire, it's, as you can see, where is it? Here. This is the wire I'm going to be using. This is the 8 gauge. If you can see, I might put my hand here so it's a bit clearer. There you go, 8 gauge. So as you can see here, it's actually real fine hair. So what I was looking for was, when I was looking for 8 gauge around where I lived, is the, the hobby, like not hobby shops, the J car and all that, they do have 8 gauge wire. But it's actually real thick stuff. And I didn't know if the real thick stuff would make a difference or go the thinner stuff because everything we use with the hobbies are all the thin wires. So I wasn't too sure. So when I bought the 8 gauge off the internet or off eBay, this here came with all the thin stuff, which I'm very happy that I didn't purchase the thicker stuff. I don't know if it will make much of a difference. If you know if it will make much of a difference from the thicker wire to this like real hair strains i think it would so that's why i'm glad that i did go the ebay one but that's your eight gauge and i'll show you the size of it thickness size if no one's ever seen eight gauge wire before so that's your eight gauge this gauge here oh, get to try find it. that there is your 12 i've got to try to get this to zoom in Colour's not good, but I couldn't find a black one, so there you go. That's your 12 gauge there. So if I put them side by side, doesn't look much difference, but it's a pretty big difference. Even just the wire just there. And then also I do have here, this is a pretty long piece though, then I've got your 14 gauge. Just here. If you can see that just there. And then if you actually look at that. So I put them all like this. Hopefully hopefully you can see the difference. The 8 gauge is a lot thicker. So, but yeah, I, was, I couldn't find anything on the internet about the eight gauge wire if it's um gonna be any like if it's fine hair wire or whatever like you know like this here is fine or not so i'm glad i did actually buy this off the net because i'll probably be using the wrong one with the thicker wire but i'm not sure if it'll make much of a difference if you know let me know it'd be great to know the difference with the wire if it will make a difference or not and also i'll be using the qs the QS8 plugs, the anti-spark sort of plugs as well. So, yeah, I can't see much on this plate. There we go. So I'll be using these for connectors. I don't know if I'm going to be doing the the Y piece there. Have the two plugs run off it so you can run two batteries or have running one battery. I'm thinking about just having it so I can run two batteries. So that's that would be my plan as well. Also, the other thing I've also done was adjusted the rear shocks. As you can see here from the last video, you remember how that one there was like way lower to the ground? So what I've done with that was actually I'll zoom in. As you might see that. There we go. I've actually measured the hole from there to there, and then from there to there, there to there, just to roughly get it where it's gonna be in between them. And then I measured from the out, from there to there, and vice versa, like from there to there, so I can roughly get it in that same area, same on that side. And it's actually lifted it up just a little bit more, which I would like it a bit higher again, but the actual arms at the back, spin this around. Sorry guys, there you go, I'll zoom these out a bit. The actual arms are pretty straight. They're not, they're not like this anymore. They're actually dead on straight all the way across. So I reckon that should be good enough. 
If I go any further, that means they're going to be bending up more sort of thing because I'll be forcing the shock down. So I might see how it runs like this. And if it's got too much power and it wants to bottom out, I may have to just drill out probably another couple of holes or another hole just a bit lower just so I can get it so it's not going to, you know, excuse the language, but drag its ass along the ground sort of thing. So that's my plan there. I did change these little wing bits too. My other ones were a lot thicker. I just put these ones on from the buggy I bought for parts just to whack them on, see how it goes. And that should be about it. I'm going to be running the Game Changer fan as well. Runs on 3S battery. I should have a 3S battery here. I'll kick it over for you. Show you how much. Yeah, that's four. There we go. They do have a fair bit of fair bit of go, so I'll kick her over now. So you put anything for about that do. So you got the fan there. Oh. So it's good. As you can hear, it's got a fair bit of go with the fan. So, yeah, that's what I'll be running in there just to keep the motor cool. I'll turn that off, I'll just break that back in there. So, that's what I'll probably be running to keep the motor cool. But I might go the little stumpy batteries in there or I'm not sure how i'm going to run it just yet but that's what i'll be running in there as well just to keep everything a bit cooler so yeah at the moment i think that sums about everything up